as we continue to look at different forms of elasticity. The next one on the list is income elasticity of demand. And we define income elasticity of demand as a measure of the responsiveness of demand to a change in income. So as before, just to, to highlight that this kind of idea of responsiveness is really key in elasticity. That's that's really what, what we use elasticity for. It, it tells us the size of the response. Um, and in income elasticity of demand, it also tells us uh, one additional thing. It also tells us the, the nature of the response. So it basically tells us whether demand will rise or fall if there is a change in people's incomes. So let's have a look at, uh, at some of the basic points of theory and then we'll look at some examples. Now, income elasticity of demand is uh, normally abbreviated to YED. Uh, we don't use I because I represents investment in economic terms. As you, as you study macroeconomics uh, in your course, you, you will look at I as meaning investment. So we use Y here to represent income. And um, what uh, we use here is our generic elasticity formula. So on the top, we have our percentage change in quantity demanded divided by our percentage change in income in this case um, just to kind of emphasize that the uh, the kind of the triangle thing here uh, that uh, that I've used this uh, this is a, a, a Greek symbol it's Delta it represents a change in so this is just a shorthand way of writing the, uh, the the full formula percentage change in quantity demanded on the top divided by the percentage change in income on the bottom as with price elasticity of demand remember that it needs to be a percentage change so if you're only given the actual prices or the actual quantities you will need to convert those into percentage changes before putting them into this formulae. Um, otherwise, the, uh, the, the answer that you get won't make any sense at all. When we looked at price elasticity of demand, um, we said that the, the price elasticity of demand value is, is almost always negative um, because of the downward sloping demand curve. But things with income elasticity aren't quite so straightforward. Um, although uh, when we looked at income as being a factor which influenced demand, we said that an increase in income will normally increase people's demand. Um, that's not necessarily true for all goods. And actually, there are some goods where people tend to buy less as their income goes up because they're able to switch to better alternatives. So uh, an example that we'll look at later on is uh, is kind of supermarket value own brand toilet paper. Now, as people earn more money, they, they tend to buy less of that. So actually, we, we, we need to consider the fact that after a rise in income, demand may actually rise or fall for products. So we have to consider the full range of values that we might get out of this formula. So if we just move this up a little bit, we can kind of think about what uh, what those ranges of values might actually be. So um, as with kind of most of our elasticity values, we have kind of these key points on our range um, that, that we could adopt. So at the one end, we've got uh, minus infinity. At the other end, we've got positive infinity. We've got zero in the middle. And then we've got uh, positive one and negative one. Now, the YED value, the income elasticity of demand value could sit anywhere on this spectrum. <clears throat> um, and, and it's very important to think about firstly, whether the, the value is positive or negative. So you must take a great deal of care when you're thinking about the direction of change. So if something has fallen, that means it will have a negative percentage change. Um, but when we actually calculate the YED value, we can fit it onto this spectrum. Now, if it is a negative value, then that means that the demand and the income are moving in opposite directions. Um, so what that must mean is that, for instance, if income is rising, then uh, the level of demand is falling. So if that's the case, then that means we must be talking about one of these kind of uh, poor quality products that people switch away from. Now, we have a specific term for those in economics, we refer to those as inferior goods, and they occupy the full negative range of the of the uh, of of the spectrum here. So, if your YD value is negative, then uh, then we refer to that product as inferior. And the further it moves away from zero, so the further it moves this way, the more inferior it is becoming. So, if it 
has a yd value of say minus four that makes it very inferior if it has a, a income elasticity value of let's say minus 0 0.2 then it is slightly inferior now if we think about what's going on on the other side of the spectrum then um we refer to this side of the spectrum as being occupied by normal goods so normal goods are the ones that span all the way across uh, here that the positive ones um, we do also have an extra term we refer to these ones up here so just between kind of one and infinity so a yd value of more than one if it's in that bracket we refer to it as a luxury good so um, of course the, the alternative way this is elastic and normal so if a good is elastic and normal we refer to it as a luxury good um, so those are the potential ranges that uh, that we might get here. Uh, so let's just kind of have a look at, um, at at a couple of examples. We'll we'll work through and see how that actually fits, and then we'll talk briefly about why this actually matters for a business. So I've got three little examples of calculations that um, that we can look at here in terms of income elasticity of demand. Uh, three different types of products. In each case, basically, what we need to do is calculate the income elasticity of demand and then interpret what that means. Um, when we talk about the interpretation here, we're just talking about kind of labeling it properly with, um, you know, elastic, inelastic, normal, inferior, luxury, that sort of thing. So, uh, so we'll have a look, uh, first of all, at, uh, at this question here. So we will look at this one. So if income increases by 10% and the demand for fresh fruit increases by 4%, what is the YD and what does this mean about the nature of the good? So how do I go about calculating this one? Well, let's, uh, let's have a look. So we need our formula, first of all. So we've got YD equals percentage change quantity demanded divided by percentage change in income. It's always a good idea to write your formula down rather than jumping straight into the numbers um, if for no other reason than uh, the formula will normally be enough to get you a mark even if the numbers then are wrong. So uh, so do always start with the formula. It, it just makes sure you do the calculation the right way around as well. So in this case um, I've got both of my numbers here. Now we can see that both of them are already expressed as percentage change so that's absolutely fine. Um, the important thing that I need to think about here though uh, which wasn't so much of an issue um, before, but really does matter here, is the direction of change. I have to be very clear about that. So in this case, both of them are increasing, which means both of them are going to be positive values. So which one is the quantity demand one? That's the 4. So I've got plus 4 divided by plus 10, which means that my YED value is 0 0.4. So if we calculate the yd there we can see that it is 0 0.4 <clears throat> as with price elasticity of demand there are no units on that it's just a number so it's 0 0.4 0 0.4 means that it is normal um, and relatively inelastic what that means is that when income increases, demand increases, but by a less than proportionate amount. So although it is normal, it is relatively unresponsive. Another way that we kind of might then be able to uh, to think about that is what it would actually mean in terms of uh, if we were drawing a diagram. Because if we think about it, income we talked about as being one of the conditions of demand, something that would uh, cause demand to shift right and left. So what does this calculation mean in terms of that? Well, it means that if I've got uh, a product like this that I'm looking at, then the shift to the right in demand is likely to be relatively small. So the shift from D to D1 is likely to be relatively small in this case, because we know that demand is relatively unresponsive to a change in the income. So I would draw it with a, with a relatively small shift to the right of demand like that. Let's jump over then to the next one here. So a uh, similar sort of thing. Let's work it through. If income increases by 10% and the demand for fine wine increases from uh, 10,000 bottles to 11,500, what is the YD and what does this mean about the nature of the good? So let's start in the same way. So YD equals percentage change quantity demanded 
divided by percentage change in income. So now I need to check to make sure that I've got my values. Uh, so let's have a quick look at, uh, at what I've actually got here. Uh, I've got my income increasing by 10%, so that's fine. Uh, we can see here, though, that actually my change in quantity demanded, though, is not currently expressed as a percentage. It's given as, um, as an amount, as, as an am amount of bottles. Um, apologies for the typo in the first bottles there. Um, but um, so what uh, what we need to do, first of all, is calculate what that change is um, as a percentage so that we can put it into the top half of my formula. There. Now, the a percentage change is the new value minus the original value divided by the original value and multiplied by 100. You may have learned the top there as the difference, um, in, in which case it's fine. So the new value here is 11500. The original is 1000, oh, 10,000, beg your pardon. And the original, as we said, is 10,000 multiplied by 100. So what does that give us then? That gives us 1500 over 10,000 multiplied by 100 which equals 15%. So that's the first stage that I need. So now if I just whiz this up a little bit. So now I can go back to my formula for YED. So my percentage change in quantity demanded divided by my percentage change in income. So I know that my percentage change in quantity demanded is 15 because I've just calculated that and that's an increase. And this was based on, go back and check quickly, an increase of 10% in the income, which means I have a YED of 1.5. And a YED of 1.5 can be interpreted as elastic and normal which as we said before means that this good would be considered a luxury in other words when incomes increase demand increases proportionally more um, and again if we have a quick look back at the top here we're talking about fine wine so fine wine is something where we would expect there to be a very strong uh, relationship between the level of demand and income so what I would do there in terms of the diagram is I would draw a much larger shift to the right to indicate that higher level of elasticity last one then um, if in income increases by 10% and demand for own brand budget toilet paper falls by 8%, what is the YED and what does this mean about the elasticity of the good? Same starting point now, getting a bit dull and repetitive, but it's worthwhile because it means that your answers will be better structured. So percentage change in quantity demand divided by the percentage change in income. Identify the numbers here and here. Um, key thing here, though, is that I've got one increasing and the other falling, so I have to represent that fall as a negative value. So the percentage change in quantity demanded, which is what I've got here, the demand is falling by eight, so that's minus eight on top, and that's with a 10% income increase, so that's um, plus 10 on the bottom, which means that overall my YED is going to be negative 0.8. The negative here is very important. You must remember to include the negative values and carry them through your calculation properly. This means that it is slightly inelastic and inferior. So let's just have a look then at kind of the three of these together. If we put them all back like this. Okay, so these are all of my uh, my situations. So what does this mean then? How is this information useful to a business? Um, not as directly perhaps as price elasticity of demand, but really what income elasticity of demand is telling us is what sorts of products um, a business should offer up for sale um, at particular times or in particular areas. What the businesses will be able to do is they will be able to look at uh, how income levels are changing in a particular area and then they will be able to adjust their product mix accordingly so that they can uh, so that they can benefit from as many sales as possible. Uh, so, for instance, in the recent recession, um, we saw the growth of uh, brands which would normally be seen as being inferior brands like Aldi and Lidl, uh, those, those sorts of companies um, as income levels 
uh, stagnated and fell in in real terms. People switched uh, to those to those cheaper alternatives. Now that the recovery is starting to emerge, we can see that even those cheaper brands are starting to uh, extend their product line and sell uh, sell products which would be considered uh, normal um, or even luxury in some cases. Uh, you know, Aldi recently certainly has made a big play on uh, increasing their sales of of good wine. So um, it's it's important for a business to know. Uh, how to to stock their products and the product range which they need to offer. So that runs us through the basics of uh, what uh, what incoming elasticity is, how we calculate it. I'll run through a few examples there. Um, the the key thing really with incoming elasticity uh, compared to price elasticity is to remember that whether the YD is positive or negative makes a huge huge difference here. Um, so. Uh, so that's that's kind of that's the, the key thing to remember. Um, also, uh, try and remember this doesn't relate to revenue in the same way. So uh, so try not to to make that mistake. It's quite a common one for for people to confuse income elasticity and price elasticity and start talking about revenue here. But income elasticity is all about how much the demand curve would shift essentially following a change in income.